Hey guys, my name is Matt. Just decided to put up another video um, in relation to my sobriety. I uh, put up one, I think, about nine months ago, and I was uh, about 18 months sober, I think, maybe not quite, but um, thought, you know, a few people watched it. I certainly rambled on a bit, so I take my hat off to anyone who managed to navigate their way through half an hour of uh, whatever it was I was trying to articulate. I, I don't know if I did particularly well, but uh, often when people share sobriety stories, you know, there's always that element of, you know, how they're doing now, they're still sober. And you know, thankfully, you know, obviously, um, as I said before, you know, I am. Uh, it's just a tick over two years and three months now, which had you said that to me when I was having my last drink, which I didn't realize it would be at the time, that, uh, you know, you'd not show up over two years. I don't know who I would have thought that was possible, but as I mentioned in my uh, my first installment video that, you know, I found a high power, uh, even though I don't go to AA, I understand the necessity to find something bigger than yourself. And for me, that's my son who recently just turned two. Um, I'd love to be able to sit here and say, as my sobriety has lengthened, that my life has uh, become, you know, happier and more fulfilled and doors have opened. Uh, I can certainly say doors have closed, which they always used to do when I was drinking. You know, my, my job now, I've been uh, in for just over two years, which doesn't sound like much, but for someone with my history, that's sort of a minor miracle. Um, but things are hard, you know, things are still really hard for me. I still struggle with a lot of my inner demons. Um, I think naively I thought that sobriety would um, sort of take those away and it hasn't. I guess the difference is now I probably don't drown them out and uh, I don't, my, my bad days are nowhere near as bad as it used to be, but you know, I still have a lot of issues with, you know, my mental health, um, childhood traumas, which don't tend to go away, um, abandonment, and, um, you know, really insecure in my own skin. Um, and, you know, I put this video up this week. Uh, I'll, I've been living with my son and his mother and her other kids. Um, amicably, even though we're not in a relationship and things have taken a pretty um, downward spiral because she's just, you know, entered into a new relationship and she's been having him over and it obviously hasn't gone particularly well. And I sort of blew up about it a bit the other day, verbally. Um, she made the right call to, to ask me to leave. Um, so this is day two in a, in a house share, you know, with people I don't know in a part of the world I still don't know that well. You know, Melbourne was my home until a couple of years ago and I feel really lost up here. And to be honest with you, I feel really lonely and they're often precursors uh, for my drinking. And it'll be another chapter, another challenge, probably one I haven't really faced yet. Um, there has been some thought about it this week for the first time in a long time because as a result of my um, moving out, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near as access, as much access to my son, who obviously I was seeing every every day, and that you know that really breaks my heart. That's something I can't even really think about, to be honest, because um, when you have a child, um, and you've taken for granted that they're in your life every day, and that suddenly gets taken away. It's like no other feeling, like I've had relationship breakdowns, I've lost family members, you know, my mum and some close friends, but when you're not with your child, it's it's something I can't explain. It just tears your heart out and um, emotional, sorry. And I've got to try and sit with that, um, that pain and find tools that I don't know if I have to to deal with that and obviously not to drink. And he's always been my motivator and he's not gonna be in my life as much. And I wonder if I'm going to still have that 
that driving force that I've always had. And I really hope I do because I know for a fact if I revisit the alcohol, um, I wouldn't be able to see my son. And I've been told that by his mother and that's a good decision. And she understands I couldn't and it wouldn't be a, a, a healthy or safe environment um, for him to see me like that and to be in that state. So yeah, of course, I don't want to drink and it scares the shit out of me that that would be the case if I did. But yeah, I feel lost, I feel really lost. You know, I just work, I feel lost at work. Um, sort of most days I'm on my own at work and as a painter, you sort of get stuck in your own head a bit. So it's, um, it's really challenging and I feel, I just feel so disconnected, you know. Um, I bloody dropped my phone a few days ago and it's broken. I mean, I've got to get it fixed and hopefully I will tomorrow. So even just having a few days and no phone, um, I can't call people. I, I can't be contacted unless I'm using, you know, like Messenger and stuff on, on Facebook on my laptop, which I can't exactly take with me to work because I don't have internet, all this crap. So I feel the sense of emptiness and loneliness is just being amplified. So I guess I'm just putting this video up as a self-reflection, but I, did, I think it's really important to, to celebrate your sobriety, but also to share the struggles and to show that um, the times that your sobriety is so important, it's always important, but so important is when you're in a place where in the past alcohol was your only, um, and it, you know, antidote or only uh, sense of release from the pain that you're in. And I'm in that place now, I'm in a really painful, some emotionally traumatic place and I'm still sober and I'm figuring out how it's, it's, it's less about, um, the sobriety and more about how do I deal with this emotional pain, um, in a way that I haven't done before, cause I don't really know how to, you know, and I won't go over my story. If you guys are interested, it's in that part one, um, the video that I did. Uh, because I'm not drinking, I haven't got any more war stories to add, thankfully. I still have a lot of shit that goes down, but not of the nature that um, they had been in the past. So, yeah, often during my period, periods of sobriety, I found it really, at times, really important to see videos and hear of other people's stories and other people's testimonies and... Um, that often talk with a sense of sadness about the stuff they've done. And the, the sobriety period has been sort of one of um, a really heightened emotional state, a positive one and a really happy one. And that's great, but sometimes I think it's important to see people who aren't doing so well um, and don't have a lot to cheer about, but still hanging in there and, and, and staying sober or clean. Um, because right now, it feels like it's the only thing I have. I feel like I've lost everything. Everything feels like it's out of my control. I feel like everything's slipping away. And um, in some respects, the sobriety is the only thing I can hang on to at the moment. Um, and I know if I was to drink, to be really honest with you, I think if I was to pick up a drink right now and allowed that emotional state to just overcome me that I'd probably be very close to suicide. And that's not something I say lightly at all because you feel so lost and helpless when you do drink. Um, so it's a pretty sobering thought, isn't it? But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a short video. It's just to let you guys know where I'm at, how I'm, um, I'm struggling. I feel really, yeah, I feel really lonely. I, I wish I could connect with people um, in a way that makes me feel like my sob sobriety matters, you know, hopefully to someone besides myself, which is obviously the most important thing. But um, yeah, you know, we're all just people and we struggle and they say one day at a time. And that's true, but sometimes it's just life is one day at a time, isn't it? 
find things to keep you going and hang in there. I'm going to do that and I encourage others to. And like I've always said, if you wanted to ever reach out to me, um, please put a comment or add some some details, whatever. And I, I'd love to have that conversation or go on a journey alongside you because uh, I feel like I have a lot to to offer and I want to. I want to really help people and give back. So, yeah, thanks for listening and I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know how I'm going down the track. But I, um, I'm pretty confident it will be another sober map um, in the future too. So, yeah, cool. Take care, guys. Thanks.